The Lowrider ST is a motorcycle that shocked me because I made a video about it earlier this year speaking on why I didn't think the motorcycle was for me. And then after getting some seat time with it, you know, putting my hands on it, riding it in different environments, I realized that I got it wrong. Not spending too much on the specs, I spent most of my time just thinking about the experience and the story that I would have riding this bike. And yeah, it has the 117, we know it's going to be torquey, the weight is good on this bike, the chassis is good, it's the lowrider, it's the lowrider platform. And also that little bit extra of suspension, it, it helps so much when you're on the freeway and of course the biggest star of this is that fairing. So all of this combined is making for this really good sport touring platform. The seating position is something that I did not expect because it's, the bike sits taller. But for me, I stand at five feet, 10 inches, around a 28 inch inseam, and I weigh around 175 pounds. So the suspension setup, the seating position, the fairing, all of that is within the design range for me. They, they make bikes essentially for people like me. And uh, it, it just works. And also the speakers, I wasn't expecting to, you know, to get a chance to experience those speakers, but they're really tuned towards the, the mid range. They don't have as much bass, but it sounds good and it is loud. So those work really well. And in the, in the aesthetics of the bike, it's, it's typical Harley. The fit and finish is going to be good. Everything, it, it feels like money. I, I can say that. So, you know, the fairing, all of this combined, I think it looks better than I, than, than I expected, especially considering for me, it took me eight years to put a windshield on that bike so I'm a person that doesn't typically ride with fairings and windshields. I was already in California from riding the nicer 975T so since I'm already there I got a chance to ride the Lowrider ST and full disclosure I am not a club style bike kind of rider I've never been on a Lowrider I've uh, never been on a bike with the 117 so all of this was a new experience for me but the reason I don't like club style bikes is not because I can't appreciate the styling is just, I didn't grow up around that. And in my area, people don't really ride club style bikes. But again, I can respect it and I appreciate it. And also we have Blockhead Moto and her two wheels. They were also there. And uh, Blockhead was talking a lot about, uh, you know, wanting to do to his low rider uh, what the low rider ST has. And her two wheels, she was talking about how this is one of her favorite motorcycles of all time, especially considering she rode in on a street bob and she was struggling big time with the wind. So getting on the bike with a fairing it worked out really well for her. The first thing you notice when you get on the Lowrider ST, again, is how tall it sits. So if you have tight hips, it's gonna be a workout, you know, getting on and off the bike, especially at stoplights. You're gonna be picking your feet up and down a lot. So for us, we got a chance to ride this bike through traffic, you know, freeway riding, uh, some canyon roads, and uh, you know, places like the boardwalk. And it gave us the chance to ride the bike, you know, in different environments and, and understand its versatility. But this also gave us an opportunity to answer questions from people stopping by asking us what kind of bike that was because we were all on the same colored bike so we kind of looked like a club <laughs> but uh people asked us about it and they you know said how good the bike looks so it is definitely a bike that will get questions once we got on the freeway that's when this bike really just came alive we did get a chance again to ride on some canyons but we didn't really go through there like crazy but I did get an, enough time to really feel the bike and you know understand it but when you hop on the free, freeway on this bike that fairing literally puts you in a bubble and that combined with that suspension it's it's really the definition of a sport touring bike and you know Harley Davidson made this bike because they saw what other people were already doing in the market like they were putting fairings on their Dynas or lowriders and they said hey if they're doing it Let's offer one straight from the factory. And rather than just slap any old fairing on the bike, they invested money into this. And they actually not only sound tested the bike, putting it in a sound chamber, but also they put this fairing in the bike through aerodynamic testing, like a wind tunnel. So they're able to see where all the buffeting and the air is coming off this bike and fine tune it. So because of that, you get a really comfortable experience when you're riding this bike. It's awesome. They, Hey, they, they put the money into it. I seriously cannot speak highly enough of that fairing. And I'm honestly glad that I got a chance to ride the Heritage Classic into Santa Barbara before this whole event took place because it gave me a reference point. So on the Heritage Classic, while it is a great bike, that chassis 
is really good. It is a sleeper of a bike. It, it, it'll take some turns, man. That, that bike surprised me. It was my first time on that bike. And the buffeting on the windshield is pretty noticeable at certain speeds. And then I hop on the Lowrider ST and virtually there is no buffeting. So having that gave me the opportunity to, you know, feel a difference. And of course, there was a 107 in the uh, Classic versus the 117 in the Lowrider ST. Now, when I came back, of course, I was just thinking, man, if they gave me a Lowrider ST to ride back, that would be so dope. Versus like, and I wouldn't be mad as be like, oh, gee, thanks, Harley. I rode in on a Classic and now I'm riding back on the ST. Like, I, I would not have been mad at all. <laughs> The one thing that I did not expect on the Lowrider ST was the sound system and for it to be, dang, that, that thing is really loud. And the only issue I had with it was that using it was a bit inconvenient, if that makes sense. All right, just to give you guys an idea of how the audio system works on this bike. So if you didn't know, there's two speakers on this Lowrider ST that are already on the bike. And also you can notice that there's no media controls on here as well. So the way that you pair your phone to the bike, you literally turn the bike on and you'll see HD audio on your Bluetooth device list and you literally just press it and it pairs it to the bike. Now the way it sounds, I already got my phone paired and it's trying to play. It gets pretty loud. problem comes in when you try to do media control. So, you know, normally most bikes have like a little button you can press to change music. On the Lowrider ST, it's not there. So to wait to, to, to change the music, you have to use your phone or use the Harley Davidson app. So for me, I wanted to try it out. I played some music on it and it sounds good. And the problem came in while I was trying to ride the bike, I wanted to change the music and I went, oh wait, I can't do that. So I thought about maybe you can also pair your Cardo, like a, you know, a comm unit to the bike and change it from there, or you have to actually mount your phone to the handlebar and do that. And at that time, I didn't have that option. So this could have changed compared to then, but it would have been better if you had the media control, but I understand why they didn't because most people probably wouldn't get it. But again, the quality of that sound system is very discreet. You don't even notice that it's there. Again, it's punchy, it's loud. It tailors towards the mid range so you hear vocals really well. And the bass is there. It's not super loud or it's super thumpy, but there's trouble and, and there's some bass in there. It's, it's, it's enough to get your feet wet. But I was very impressed with how that sounded. There was a big conversation about the asymmetrical bags on the bike. Me, I, I really didn't even think about that until somebody else brought it up. And I was like, I mean, it, I, it looked good to me. I, I don't really care. But what it, what what's more important to me is how much can I fit in the bag. So obviously you got one side with the exhaust. They probably could have done something a little bit better with the single exhaust to get a little bit more capacity in there. I'm not an engineer, but I was able to get my backpack in there with a little bit of finesse. It is, it is a struggle. But I mean, they're bags and it's a sport touring bike. So the option is there. Could it be better? Arguably, probably. Um, but it worked for me. And also there's the whole idea of being able to lane split on this bike, the bike, the bags aren't too wide. I did lane split in California on the Classic, and I can tell you that there were some there were some times where I was like, and man, I don't think it's gonna make it. I don't think it's gonna make it, but it made it, and I remember Blockhead telling me, Brandon, I think you almost scraped the car coming in, because it, it gets pretty tight when those bags are sticking out. So, you know, the bags are there, and the asymmetrical design, I understand why people feel that way about them, but to me, I think the overall look of the bike it works and it's, I guess, mostly proportional. <laughs> but as I always say, don't take my word for it. Get out there and actually ride these bikes, form your own opinion. Everybody's putting videos out here, but seeing it on a video, seeing it on a picture, seeing it in a magazine, it is so different than seeing it in person, being able to have a true scale of it and actually being able to put your hands on it and actually sit on it and actually ride it yourself. So get out there, ride these bikes. They want you to ride these bikes. As I said before, while I was out there in California, I rode the nicer 975T and I did more canyon riding on this bike than I did freeway riding. And if you have not seen that video, you can click right here to watch that video. And also, if you didn't know, I'm actually rebuilding a wrecked motorcycle. And at the end of that, I'm gonna be giving that bike away to a supporter of my channel. 
can click this playlist right here and start that series from the very beginning. But as always, thanks for listening to my story. Thanks for watching. And if you're subscribed, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.